All right, welcome back to Jet Life with Nagy. So we're here with another episode learning about the jet engine, and today we're going over the combustion section. Okay, here we go, guys, in three, two, one. And we're back with the Jetman, of course. Last time we talked about this, the compressor section, and now we're moving back to the combustion section of the engine. Maggie, that's exactly right. Right behind the compressor is the combustion section of the engine. It includes things like the fuel nozzles, the combustion liner itself, the ignition goes back to the spark plugs or the jet engine. We call these igniters. That little igniter sits inside the combustion liner right through that hole. The General Electric J85 uses what we call an annular combustor. What that means is the combustor itself goes all the way around 360 degrees inside the engine. Okay, this combustion liner has lots of different louvers in it. Why? What's going on here? That's a great question. Now, we take the air from the compressor section that we talked about last time. That air is introduced at a very high speed, high, very high pressure into the mainframe of the engine. This is where the fuel nozzles, uh, the, you can see the fuel manifold assembly looks like this one right here. And fuel nozzles are sitting inside here. Those nozzles are sticking back inside of the front of the combustion liner. And they would sit in there kind of like that. So the high pressure air coming off the back of the compressor is perfectly controlled as it comes around the combustion liner. Some of it goes to the inside, some of it goes to the outside. Here's where those fuel nozzles are. And the air actually shapes the flame that is inside the combustion liner. We don't want the flame outside, we don't want it inside. So the flame is perfectly controlled, and that is some amazing engineering that took place even as far back as the 1950s when the J85 was designed. All right, so my next question is, how does the flame get started? How does the flame get started? Good question, because in a reciprocating engine or a piston engine, that cylinder is going to fire at least once per every cycle of the engine. Now, on a jet engine, it's very different. Once we get the flame started in here, we can shut the ignition off. This is the ignition exciter box. Now the combustor itself, I'm gonna turn it this way so you can see inside. There are these grommets on the outside, they float. Those grommets are where the igniters go in. There's one here, there's one over here. Now it is one continuous flame. The reason that there's two igniters is just for redundancy in the airplane. So one big difference between a reciprocating engine and a jet engine is that once we get this flame lit, once we have the ignition that's taken place, we can turn off the igniter and the engine won't shut off, unlike that engine in your car that you drive every day. All right, so I know that this is made out of Inconel, and I want to know why some of the properties, why that's chosen for this. Sure. So Inconel is a, is a material that can sustain very, very high temperatures. Now, you remember we talked about how we shape that flame with these louvers, the high pressure air coming from the inside and outside that actually shape the flame inside of here. But it doesn't mean it's not hot. We can reach temperatures up to 1,000 degrees Celsius at the exit of, yeah, that's hot, up to 1,000 degrees Celsius at the exit of the combustion liner when we move into the turbine section of the engine. It's so hot and there's so much thermal expansion that takes place here. Things like the, the igniter plug uh, bosses, they actually float and that, there, that floats because there is so much thermal expansion and contraction throughout the whole run cycle of the engine. I just have one more question. How does the fuel itself get inside the combustor? That's a good question, actually. Coming from the fuel pumps and fuel control of the engine, the fuel goes through a fuel manifold. You can see this one's a spare, just like this one right here. And it goes through 12 fuel nozzles. And this fuel nozzle, actually the tip of it, sticks down in the, in the back of each one of these slots, if you will, into the combustion liner. I think you can probably see it way up inside there, especially as I take it out. And again, what does that do? Because there's so much thermal expansion and contraction, even the little boss inside the combustor that this goes, th goes into, it floats so that the fuel nozzle itself never gets bound up inside there. So today we learned just how hot things can get. In our application, temperatures can approach up to 1,000 degrees Celsius in the combustion section. 
There's also two igniters, just in case one fails, and the materials have to withstand very high temperatures in this section of the engine. Thanks guys, leave your questions and comments below, check out my blog, and we'll see you next time. Okay, here we go guys, in three, two, one.